Namaste, Namaskaram, Vanakam, Namo Namaha, Jai Ganesh. Please visit our website at classicalyoga.org and thanks for supporting us. As a prelude to this podcast, you may find our previous podcast, What is Your Concept of God, to be of interest. Do you believe in an uncreated being, capital B-E-I-N-G, i.e. perhaps God? Or do you believe in an uncreated being, B-E-I-N-G, as a form of the verb be? First and foremost, If we're honest, we all have beliefs. Be extremely suspicious of anyone who says they have no beliefs or we have no beliefs. Such as the Indian entrepreneur Jaggi Vasudev states, these cult leaders actually are unconsciously, subconsciously, indoctrinating their followers into their specific beliefs. Beliefs start out as assumptions. We all have those. And through time and testing, we may arrive at a belief as a conviction. And then always keeping our mind open to new discoveries, of course. Same with faith. Faith begins with hope, something we all need. But through time and testing, our hope becomes more of a solid guarantee about a personal relationship, an idea, an ideology, a religion, for example. So belief and faith are both necessary components from assumption to convictions, from hope to a solid guarantee. So with this in mind, Do you believe in an uncreated being, capital B-E-I-N-G, God? Now, it's interesting to consider that the Anglo-Saxon English word God didn't exist prior to, say, 1,500 years ago. There's a great conversation starter. Prior to 1,500 years ago, God didn't exist. So what do we say? Now, God has been defined as a one male, as opposed to goddess, creator, being, noun. And to date, no one has ever proved that such a god or goddess exists, the creator. And God is a Christian term, a monotheistic term, and often used by Jews and Muslims alike, however, the more devout would say Yahweh and Allah, respectively. But God's become kind of a universal term for many, and is this honest? Is this fair? Is there a one male creator being? And lest one thinks that God is not a gender, then those who use this term would have absolutely no problem saying, for example, our mother who art in heaven, thy queendom come. And she instead of he, or perhaps it. So it's clear that God is meant to be a male creator being. And under the sanction of this male creator being, all kinds of Isms were instituted, sexism, racism, a homophobic attitude under the auspices of this one male creator being and his word and his son, who also becomes to some synonymous with God himself. Now, there are Christian 
apologists. And this is an interesting word. At first glance, we think it means an apology, quite the opposite. As it has been very rare for Christians to apologize for all of the documented historical travesties against all the, quote, others, unquote. Apologetics, in this sense, comes from the Greek apologia, which means to defend something, which is actually antithetical to a true heartfelt apology. So these Christian apologists, for example, will often say, well, God is not a gender. But is this true? Again, will they use the female? Will they use just an it for God? Many of the apologists will define God as an uncreated being. Now, how can an uncreated being be anything in the sense of a noun? It just would not be. Now, often when people say God is a creator being, noun in the form of a gender, for example, then the legitimate question is, well, who created that God? And who created that God? And who created the infinite regress principle? So they come up with the definition that God is an uncreated being. Therefore, if it's uncreated, it doesn't really exist. Or, if it's an uncreated being in the sense of it always has been and permeates everything, well then, would there be any attempt to make any religion, in this case Christianity, an exclusive religion, if this uncreated, all-present, all-powerful, all-knowing being pervades everything? Now we're getting closer to the mystical view that is found in many of the ancient traditions, and certainly in Hinduism, that there is an uncreated being in the sense of a verb, pure energy, light, heat, the Big Bang, preceded by a dark energy, dark matter, a pure existence, a pure consciousness that always has been and always will be and was never really created, though there is creation, as these subtle forces are created into infinite forms. Now, many Christian apologists will, in what seems to be very logical, the fact that there is a creation, there must be a creator, i.e. God, since there is an, and they will recognize evolution, a fine-tuning to life, there must be a fine-tuner, recognizing the awesome complexity of the code of DNA, for example. There must be an author, recognizing moral values. It means that there must be a lawgiver. Now, these are all logical assumptions, but they are just that. They are assumptions. The bottom line is when it comes to Declaring that there is a creator, God, being, noun, well, simply where is he? Where is she? Where is it? And again, if it's now defined as a ever-existent something, then it would be all-pervasive and in all things. So there would, again, be have no problem in recognizing the validity of essentially everything. Of course, quote-unquote, when one defines God as an uncreated being, and then specifically recognizes this God in one specific religion, the illogic should be obvious. 
and this is not unique to Christians, there are many who make the assumption, which to them is an absolute declaration, that their God, their one deity, is the one from which everything came. This monotheistic mindset can be found in the world over. For example, there was a quite humorous encounter filmed on YouTube of a Hare Krishna doing his preaching on the streets of New York and a Christian minister doing his preaching. Now the Hare Krishna walked over and was respectfully listening to the Christian minister. And afterward, the minister said to the Hare Krishna, Do you believe in God? The Hare Krishna said, Oh, of course. The minister smiled. Then he said, Oh, do you believe in Jesus? The Hare Krishna said, Of course. The minister smiled again. Oh, so you believe in Jesus, the Son of God? The Hare Krishna said, of course. The minister was beaming. And the Hare Krishna said, of course, Son of Krishna. Krishna is God. See the problem? Will the real one God, the one Son of God, please stand up? The one book? This is the problem with the very limited but understandable monotheistic mindset that we probably all go through to one degree or another, and certainly in one lifetime or another. As Hindus, we believe in many lifetimes. But remember, the very word monotheism means a one one way. It's linear thinking, which is very limited. And obviously, this linear thinking gives rise to these kind of rigid fundamentalist mindsets. Prior to stereophonic sound, there was monaural, where the sound only came out of one speaker. Very limited. Huh? The invention of stereophonic was a revelation. So monotheism is still the old mindset. It goes back to the Roman numerals, or is epitomized by the Roman numerals. I'm looking for the one, desperate search for the one true deity, one true God, and it's a search in vain. Now, the Hindus came up with the numeral zero to explain the process. This becomes the binary system without which none of our life would compute. All of our technology is founded on the profound simplicity of the binary system, combining zero and one together. Out of the no thingness, which is not nothing. You can review our podcast on how to become invisible. Out of the subtle, subtle no thingness comes the one manyness. As soon as you have one, you have two. The one manyness of creation. So if we look to an uncreated being verb, hmm. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. There is a pure energy, a pure consciousness, pure existence, pure energy that becomes sound energy and heat energy and light energy. Isn't this not the essence of life? This is what we Hindus call the Atmana, that which is not our mind, soul, if you will which too means incorporeal, not the body. This inner essence of pure existence, pure consciousness, pure energy, sound energy, heat energy, light energy. Pure experience, which as humans, we invent language. Remember the word God was invented. (laughs) All of our words are invented. They're created. So how can literally the word God be an uncreated being? It's an invented word. That's why in Hinduism, to use words, we say Maunavakya Parabrahman. 
the ultimate experience is found through what seems like an oxymoron, silent speech. Mauna Vakya Parabrahman. This is why yogis go off in solitude to go beyond the material realm and go deep, deep within, losing their own personality, going beyond the very mind itself into pure consciousness, of which one cannot speak. We really do it a great injustice when we put a label on that which really cannot be labeled, doesn't mean it doesn't exist, it's just beyond speech, beyond the very mind itself that seeks to comprehend it. But it is a pure experience known, and perhaps only known when one comes out of the experience, where if one is truly in it, there is no second thing, there is no duality. So that makes it really ludicrous to speak about non-duality, speak about Advaita. Yogi Gurakana said, for example, Yatovacho nirvartante aprapyas manasa saha. This experience is beyond speech, beyond even the very mind that seeks to comprehend it. So, do you believe in an uncreated being, noun, God, that of course is only valid within one's specific tradition? Well, everyone is free to believe what they choose to believe. But those are beliefs as assumptions. No proof. Simple assumptions. If we stay in assumptions, if we stay in faith as simply hope, we can delude ourselves and others. However, do you believe in an uncreated being in the sense of verb? Hmm. Pure consciousness, pure energy, sound energy, heat, light the inner essence of your being, which has manifested into a very specific body, mind, and emotions to be respected with specific thoughts. To be respected with specific modes of getting through this incarnation. To be respected. So as we move through this world of infinite name and form, nam and rup, let's all be humble enough and honest enough to realize what we know and admit what we don't know. When it came to the ultimate questions of creation, The wise Hindu rishis simply said, Ka, who knows? There's a lot we can know, but there's much that we just don't know. So we go with what we know, is that we are all, in these human forms, and it makes a great deal of sense to seek for truth and order, satyam, rittam, cha, and to learn to live with ourself, our body, our mind, our emotions, and introspect on what perhaps is behind that, and then to learn to live with our fellow human beings, our fellow creatures on the planet. And along this seemingly eternal journey of existence, recognize the duality of life, triality, multiplicity of life, everything in its opposite, 
the good, the bad, the joy, the sorrow. And through it all, striving for peace, peace, peace. Shanti, shanti, shantihi. Remembering that peace is not merely the absence of conflict, but the presence of justice. Om shanti, shanti, shantihi.